Hey, Dr. B here. Thanks for joining me. I have a question. This one comes from Troy Ko, who asked uh, this based on from lesson 18, first, which was about first inversion triad examples and intro to second inversion triads. Troy writes, hey, Dr. B, sorry, I'm a bit confused with double the third. Do you always double the third in first inversion? Do you have, do you have a cheat sheet about doubling? Or a quick guide. Sorry, thank you for these videos, though. They help supplement my textbook greatly. Well, thanks for the comment, Troy. So, you do not need to double the third. So, double the third always? No. That is not a rule. With first inversion triads, there's no specific pitch of the triad that has to be doubled. So, this we have a triad one, three, five. In this case, the, the third of the chord will be in the bass, because that's what it means to be first inversion. That does not mean that you have to double that note. It means that three has to be in the bass. You need a five and a one above, so especially if, if you're doing a four-part four texture, you'll need both of those notes above, and then you will double a pitch. Now the question as to what pitch to double with first inversion is pretty flexible, which is one of the reasons first inversion triads are so useful and effective in music, is because they allow for a degree of flexibility in terms of voice leading and doubling that you do not have in a root position triad or a second inversion triad. The rules are, there's really only one real rule, and that's number three here, I'm kind of skipping one or two, do not double the leading tone. As long as you are not doubling the leading tone, double whatever you want. Now, let's just make sure we're super clear. What is it that we're talking about when we're talking about the leading tone? The leading tone, and there's, this is a little bit subtle, but essentially the easy way to think about it is it is scale degree seven. The seventh note of your scale is called the leading tone. Don't double that. Now, if we want to take it to another level of sophistication, we can ask ourselves, well, leading tone has a certain function as well. What if we, is there any way we can use scale degree seven where it's not functioning as a leading tone? Well, the answer is yes, because the beauty of music theory and the beauty of music is that there's so almost infinite permutations and possibilities. So, where is it that we could use scale degree seven where it doesn't function as a leading tone? Well, if I were to write a three chord in the key of C major, that would be E, G, B. The B is the seventh scale degree, but this B is not functioning as a leading tone. In a three chord, it doesn't. Um, so that's why very typically you can have progressions where they go I just played one, three, four as a chord progression. And in one, three, four, I resolve that scale degree seven down. Now, normally when it's actually, when scale degree seven is functioning as a leading tone, it, it has to resolve up, almost always, especially uh, in an outer voice. Sometimes you can make exceptions when it's in an inner voice, but the tendency is for it to resolve that's the tendency of a leading tone. But yes, you can have scale degree seven, for example, in a three chord where it doesn't function like a leading tone. But the short answer where you know you can't go wrong is just don't double scale degree seven and you're good. Double anything else you want. Well, how do you decide what you want? Well, use your ear. Also, keep in mind voice leading. So as you're voice leading a piece of music, you might find that if you double the root in this one situation, it really helps you, that melodic line. Or maybe maybe doubling the fifth makes more sense. Or maybe the third, that the, the melodic lines that you're creating, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, flow better. The voice leading is better. It's more interesting. It jumps around less. Whatever the voice leading reason might be, double that note. So any kind of contrapuntal texture, which is mostly what we're doing when we talk about music theory one and two in a collegiate setting and for Bach chorale writing, double whatever makes sense. Double the third, 
I don't even want to cross that out. It's just that's not the rule. The rule is don't double the leading tone. And after that, you can double the root, the third, or the fifth, as long as they're not a leading tone. When we look at other aspects of doubling, you can also double for sonority, meaning the sound. Like, maybe you want to double the root or the fifth for the type of sonority. It gives it a slightly different character, a certain different kind of richness, which depending on where you are in the music, what you're trying to achieve, one might be preferable to the other. So sometimes you're just going to use your ear. One common thing that happens in first inversion triads is that you often end up doubling the soprano. So, so let, let's, let's give some examples here. Uh, and, but before I give you the example, let me tell you the, the why of that. Your soprano is often the most dominant melody in the texture. And we as human beings like to hear melodies, and we like to hear the top voice as the melody. So if we double the soprano, which is that top voice that's often the melody, we reinforce that melody. We make that melody stand out a little bit more. That's a good thing. It ends up sounding very pleasing to the human ear. So voice leading in a contrapuntal texture, choose whatever root third or fifth makes the best flow for your melodies. If you're just looking at it vertically for a sonority, you might want to double the soprano. You might not, but you can double the root third or fifth as long as it's not a leading tone for whatever sound you want. Let's look at specific examples. If we take a one chord and put it in first inversion, those pitches, and I'm just going to do it in root position, C, E, G. That's my one chord. E is in the bass. I can double any one of those notes. I can have another E, I could have, I could have two E's in that chord, two C's, or two G's. Because this is none of these notes, C, E, or G, are the leading tone. So I can do whatever I want. Complete flexibility. I can base it on the sonority I want, or whatever voice leading purposes. The two chord has scale degrees two, four, and six. Also, no scale degree seven. So D, F, A, I can double any one of those notes, and I'm actually going to write it differently. I'm going to erase the third here as I write it here on this, this board and put it down there so you actually see that I now have, I can put any other note. There's a, a, a mystery note. What is it going to be? It could be any one of those three pitches. doesn't matter. Now here, this gets a little interesting, our three chord. Three chord is almost never found in first or second inversion. Either is the sixth chord. The three chord is almost always in root position in most traditional classical music. However, theoretically, you could find it in a passage. Most typically, you would find it in a passage of, uh, in a sequence of first inversion triads. So you might see it in two, three, six, four, six, that progression or you're just using parallel first inversion triads, um, either ascending or descending. And here, um, the pitches are E, G, it would be the bass, and B. Now, we talked about this a little bit ago. This B is scale degree 7. If you want to be super, super safe and make sure that the music sounds great, don't double the B. You can double the E, you can double the G. That would be safer, safest. That said, this B is not functioning as a leading tone. So there might be a situation where you actually want to double that B, and it would be okay. These rules for music theory, they're almost more, should be conceived of more as, what's your first option? What would be, if you follow the rules, that's option one. That's your best choice. That's your go-to move. But if you have a compelling reason to break the rule, that's okay. That's exciting. The, the question and the key point in what I just said is it's got to be a compelling reason. I use the word reason. It cannot be arbitrary. If you just do a bunch of arbitrary stuff, people will listen to it. They'll be confused. They probably won't like it. Um, and it's got to be compelling, meaning it's got to be strong enough of a reason that it 
overrides the 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 more the your basic rule. So in this case, if I if I were as a composer to try to double this, I would try to make sure that voice leading wise, it really made sense for me to double that B. That I, I had I was establishing some kind of like descending melodic line or ascending melodic line, and the doubling for both the Bs that it it was approached smoothly and it resolved smoothly, and then the integrity of that, that voice leading in those melodic lines would make the double B just sound fine. Now, moving forward, when we get to the four chord, here we go F, A is in the bass, C. Notice no scale degree seven. I can double any one of these pitches above. My choice. And so I'm not, you know, going back to our question, it's not about I don't have to double the third. I could double the root of this chord, or the fifth of this chord. When we're talking about first inversion triads, you can't just say, oh, you, you have to double any one of these notes, and you can't double this other one, because it's going to change what, what you're allowed to do. And the reason it changes is because you're basing it off of a scale degree, not a member of the chord. When we deal with root position triads, we're talking about root third fifth. And, and what, what it function, how, that, how those pitches function in the key, we're not really considering at that moment. We're just saying, in a root position triad, double the root. That, that's just our big blanket rule. Doesn't matter if, 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 if it's a one, two, three, four chord, five chord, doesn't matter. Double the root. And when we're dealing with second inversion triads, the rule is double the fifth of the chord. Doesn't matter which chord it is. Doesn't matter what scale degree that is. First inversion triads are different. Here, the rule is do not double the leading tone, scale degree seven. When we get to our five chord, which would be G, B would be in our bass, D. Well, right here, this B, here it is again, there's our scale degree seven. This time, it is functioning as the leading tone. The five chord, this B is in the bass, is going to resolve up to, to tonic. There's almost no exceptions to that. I say almost because, again, composers love to figure out how to make exceptions. But for, for those of you just really getting understanding music theory, how to analyze, how to understand 99.9% .9 of the music, you're going to see this, this first inversion 5 chord, that B is going to resolve up. So we don't double that. Why don't we double that? Well, if we double the B, they're both tendency tones, they both want to resolve up to tonic, then we would have parallel octaves or parallel unison, right? So the reason we don't double scale degree seven is because it's a tendency tone, and if we don't have two tendencies and they both resolve up, we have parallel octaves, and if we have two tendencies and one resolves up and the other doesn't, then we have only half of our tendency tones resolving, and the other half do something completely unexpected. So that's why we don't want to double the leading tone. I mentioned before that the sixth chord is almost always found in root position, but theoretically it would be A, C in the bass, and then E. None of those are scale degree seven, so double whatever you want. Our seven diminished would be B, D in the bass, and F here again. We have a B in our key of C, which is our leading tone, and it's functioning like the leading tone. Both, both our five chord and our seven chord, this is where we, we need to be worried about our doubling of first inversion triads. It's really in only those two. Those are the two critical, the three chord to a, a more minor extent. But if you see a five chord in first inversion, don't double the third of the chord. When you see a 7 diminished 6 chord, don't double the root of that chord. Don't double the leading tone. And, I, and maybe I misunderstood uh, Troy's question here with, with uh, it always double the third. It's, it's more that you never double the third in a 5-6 chord. Never double the third in a 5-6 chord. And never double the root and a 7 diminished 6 chord. Those are your most critical things 
to avoid. If you do that, the music's going to flow nicely. Um, part of these rules are here to help you. It's here to help you compose faster and make it sound better. You follow these rules, it will sound good. Guaranteed, because you're following all these principles that have been discovered over the last couple hundreds of years. Even longer if we go all the way back to ancient Greece. But if we go back even just to the beginning of major minor tonality in the beginning of the Baroque era, we've got a couple hundred years here of great minds figuring out what's going to sound good and what's going to work. So that's the rule. Doubling of first inversion triads, do whatever you want as long as it's not the leading tone. Thank you.